Board of Industrial Training graduates 206 students, family accused Region 5 GPL employee of Skullduggery. In the region, ex-Columbia president testifies over witness tampering bribery and internationally, Zimbabwe's economy. Doctor strike rejects government pay rise. Greetings and welcome to this edition of Headline News Update. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. The Board of Industrial Training recently graduated over 200 students in a variety of skill sets, with a majority of graduates receiving training for jobs in the oil industry. More from Wendell Jeffrey. Yesterday was our board day, and I bake a cake for her. I, I snit and everything, and she was there. So she would like to do just like her dad. On Friday last, the Board of Industrial Training graduated some 206 students from across Region 4. The participants acquired a variety of skills. Michael Allison was the lone graduate in the culinary arts department, and he said that he would like to be a role model for his daughter. The largest segment of the graduates was in the field of heavy-duty equipment operations. These classes were conducted in the evenings to facilitate individuals who are working regular jobs. Gregory Liu said that he appreciated the flexible hours of the classes and that he took the opportunity in preparing for the oil industry. I'm a working man and the course was actually free. Right? It's the USA and the board came together and offered us a course that's free. Being a working man, just a little sacrifice because the classes was after work actually for four hours. You know, the big oil coming together now. It's only right for us to take these opportunities from the government, get ourselves in gear. There was also a lone female in the heavy-duty equipment operation class, Kamanta Pompey. She said that she is working to secure the best possible future for her daughter. I hope that she will become um, better than her mother and more empowered than her mother. Over the years, the Board of Industrial Training Program has proven to be very successful with a cumulative graduation of over 20,000 individuals. The board conducts training in several regions. However, the training board chairman, Mr. Clinton Williams, said that they intend to take their training program to the remotest parts of Guyana. The projection for 2019 is for the training board to certify 25,000 persons in the varied skill sets that the board offers. For Channel 2 Headline News, Wendell Jeffrey. Thanks, Wendell. Guyana will soon be the beneficiary of one billion Guyana dollars under the Spotlight Initiative, a joint European Union and United Nations partnership to eliminate all forms of violence against women and girls worldwide. UN Resident Coordinator and United Nations Development Program Resident Representative Nico Tanaka during a presentation at the 13th National Tishaus Council Conference yesterday, revealed that the following consultations with government and civil society. The program will be implemented over the next three years in communities across regions 4 and 5 in the coastland and regions 1 and 7 in the hinterland. Meanwhile, Minister within the Ministry of Indigenous Peoples Affairs, Valerie Garrido Lo, acknowledge the importance of the program, stressing that Guyanese women need to be protected and respected. The initiative aims at ending all forms of violence against women and girls, targeting those that are most prevalent and contribute to gender equality across the world. Coming up after the break, family accuses Region 5 GPL employee of skullduggery. It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. 
Mason Francois chocolate here. It's a little, really quick cheese in your taste buds. It's handmade. It's chocolate. It's true. It's healthy, organic, delicious, and nutritious. Have a taste of our chocolates, cakes, and much more in a variety of flavors like never before. Try our peppermint, walnut ginger, coconut rum cream, and pistachio. Only at Mason Chocolate here. 45 Garnet Street, Georgetown, and also indulge in our Saturday and Sunday breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea only by reservations. Telephone 648 2619. Mason Francois Chocolate here, the best chocolates you ever have. Wouldn't it be nice if we didn't have so much waste to dispose of in the landfill? Well, composting can help us reduce the waste we dispose of by turning our organic waste into compost, which can be used to improve the quality of our soil. Composting is very simple and convenient. You can compost using organic waste such as vegetable skins. Or fallen leaves and cut grass and put this in a composting bin or pile. Compost can help your garden grow healthy plants while reducing your volume of waste. It's a really good way to keep our communities clean and healthy. So, let's all start composting our waste. Find out how easy it is. Call us on 226-2189 or 227-8429 or visit our website, moc.gov.gy. A message from the Ministry of Communities in collaboration with the Inter-American Development Bank. Welcome to Kasum's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture Furnishing homes for over 60 years. Welcome back. One woman in Burpees is questioning the motive behind one GPL employee's insistence that her deceased uncle's meter is removed from the home. More from Esther Sobers. Family members of 61-year-old deceased re-migrant Trevor John are planning to file legal action against the Guyana Power and Light. According to John's niece, who didn't want to appear on camera, on October 2nd, an order was made by GPL branch in New Amsterdam to have John's meter removed from his Stanley Town Burby's home. This is after the power company claimed that John had an outstanding balance of $3,468 and they reportedly cannot collect a payment on behalf of the deceased. When the representative went to the office the afternoon to make payment, he was told by the staff there he cannot make payment on the account because the person is dead and they do not accept payment on dead people's account. I then went into the Main Street office to find out if that is true and if that's a policy that they have. I was told by the staff there there is no such policy and I can make the payment there. After contacting the head office in Georgetown, she learns that no such policies exist. As such, she then paid the bill. Still concerned, the woman further dwelt into why the New Amsterdam branch was adamant about not collecting payments and removing the meter. She was shocked to learn that it was a senior officer from the power company, Region 5 branch, that ordered the meter to be removed. We know that there is someone that has a personal vendetta against the family works at GPL New Amsterdam. I went on to query if this person had any dealings where I was told. And I, I also saw for a fact that she was on the account and she was actually the person who ordered the meter to be removed. This account is being paid up to date. There is no outstanding payments on this account. This, Even though no one lives in the house, the, the account is being paid every month. No outstanding payments, but still we owe a reconnection fee. The woman for her decided to contact GPL Region 5 branch after learning that payments are accepted on behalf of a deceased person. However, she was dumbfounded by the supervisor's response. When I called, they, I spoke to one Miss Mickle. Miss Mickle related to me that she knows that this individual is dead. 
She went to his funeral. She personally knows him. I asked her what documents the GPL have that he's dead because you can't work off of a, off of a here, see, and say, oh, he's dead. You have to have certain documents and proof. It's on their website. The list of documents you need to bring in if you want to change the meter or you want to have it removed. She she told me that um, I told her that this was not related to me at the Georgetown office. She said Georgetown does their own thing, and this is a policy that they have. And this is oh, what I think she's a supervisor there. Mm -hmm. And she says, um, this is what has to be what has to happen and the meter has to be removed and let the wife of the deceased come in and apply for her own service. Headline News through a telephone interview spoke to John's widow, who resides in Canada. She claims that she's in talks with her lawyer and a complaint was issued to GPL and the Public Utilities Commission about the matter. Headline News also spoke to a representative of JPL who confirmed that payments are still collected on behalf of a deceased person. For Channel 2 Headline News, Esther Sobers. Thanks, Esther. When we return, ex-Columbia president testifies over witness tampering. And Zimbabwe economy, Dr. Strike rejects government's pay rise. at the Green Generation Guyana Camp. Is this the correct way to do it? Drivers, you have two options that you can use. First, you can temporarily put your empty plastic bottles in the trunk of your vehicle or on the ground on the passenger side next to you. Or secondly, place them in the nearest garbage bin you see. We need you to play your part in helping us keep the environment clean and healthy message from the Ministry of Communities, Green Generation Guyana Sanitation Program. For more information, please contact us on 592-227-2605 or you may find us on the World Wide Web at www.moc.gov.gy. Mason Francois Chocolatier is a lick with a cake, teasing your taste buds. It's handmade, it's chocolate, it's true. It's healthy, organic, delicious, and nutritious. Have a taste of our chocolates, cakes, and much more in a variety of flavors like never before. Try our peppermint, walnut ginger, coconut rum cream, and pistachio. Only at Mason Chocolatier. 45 Garnet Street, Georgetown, and also indulge in our Saturday and Sunday breakfast, lunch, and afternoon tea only by reservations. Telephone 648 2619. Maison Francois Chocolates here, the best chocolates you ever have. Welcome to Kasoon's Furniture. Find everything you need for your home and more under one roof in our newly decorated showroom. Our locally crafted furniture has been perfected over the last 60 years. From our hands to your home, we also bring to you our newly introduced lines of imported furniture and sleep center, where you can find a wide range of beds and mattresses. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 60 years. It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. It's John Lewis Styles buy one get one at half price sale. Buy any t-shirt, top, polo, shirt, dress, pantsuit, or skirt suit and get the second one at 50% off. Same goes for shoes, handbags, and lingerie at half price. Hurry because John Lewis Styles half price sale ends soon. Welcome back. 
in the region is sting operations by the Special Operations Response Team of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service has uncovered what can only be described as inhumane. Officers on Wednesday rescued 69 people, four of them women, who were being held captive in cages at a church in Aruka. The men and women, all Trinidad and Tobago nationals, range in ages from their 20s to their 60s. Some were kept in handcuffs. They have so far arrested six people in connection with the disturbing find. The church they were imprisoned at is a rehabilitation center. Former Colombian President Alvaro Uribe is giving evidence in court regarding accusations he tried to influence and bribe paramilitary members who had damaging evidence against him. Al Jazeera's Alessandro Rampatai reports. Surrounded by bodyguards and political allies, former Colombian President Álvaro Uribe climbed the stairs of the Supreme Court on Tuesday with the country collectively holding its breath. For the first time, a former Colombian president could be facing criminal charges as supporters and opponents of the still popular right-wing leader confronted each other in front of the tribunal. With protesters calling him a criminal and the Uribistas, as his supporters are known, trying to silence them with horns. We came here today to finally demand justice from our system. Alvaro Uribe is an assassin who belongs in jail. This hearing is just the tip of the iceberg of all the crimes he has committed. Uribe's eight years in office were beset by corruption and serious human rights abuses. But for many Colombians, he remains the country's savior, the president who fought Colombia's rebel fighters, bringing the country back from the brink of becoming a failed state. Now he's being investigated for witness tampering, in a case dealing with his alleged connections to paramilitary groups. For his supporters who questions the court's independence, he's simply the victim of a conspiracy. He has persecuted this country's criminals, guerrillas, drug traffickers. He demobilized paramilitaries. That's why he's the victim of a plot against him. It's the conspirators and the political left trying to take over the country, but they will fail. The judges of the Supreme Court have been preparing this hearing for over a year and said they have at least a hundred questions for Uribe to answer. This is the first day of closed-door court proceedings and it's highly unlikely that a decision will be reached before at least another couple of days of questioning, leaving the country in suspense about the fate of Alvaro Uribe's trial. Uribe is a person who raises passions both from supporters and detractors alike and so I think that regardless of what happens... Since leaving office, Uribe has remained popular and divisive equally hated and glorified. Whatever the tribunal's decision, it risks further deepening divisions in the country. Alessandra Pietti, Al Jazeera, Bogota. And internationally, doctors in Zimbabwe are continuing to strike, defying a government order to return to work. They have rejected a 60% pay rise, saying it is not enough to keep up with the soaring prices. Al Jazeera's Haru Matasa reports. Tendai Musiwa's 16-year-old son broke his leg last month. She took him to a public hospital, only to be told doctors have been on strike over pay and wages for more than a month. Her son's been admitted, but she says all nurses can do for him is keep him comfortable. I don't have x-ray vision. I can't see what's happening inside his leg. What if it is infected and rotting? We are begging the government to talk to the doctors. Patrick Kadzeri and his seven-year-old son, Blessed, were told to come back after a month when maybe the strike will be over. He's just a child. All they had to do is remove his cast. They say only specialists can do that. I don't understand. They are meant to care for the sick. It seems heartless. Until there is a breakthrough, Zimbabwe's public hospitals are barely functioning. Doctors have long complained about pay and working conditions. They want their salaries in U.S. dollars or the equivalent amount at the official bank rate. Last week, unions rejected the government's offer of a 60% salary increase, saying after deductions, they're taking home basically nothing. This is the entrance to the casualty ward. Usually it's busy with many people coming in and out. But several patients say they've been turned away. Only emergency cases are being treated. Where possible, contingency measures have been put in place. 
some of the wards have been uh, combined for ease of uh, provision of services and um, government has uh, requested assistance from um, uniform uh, forces. We have doctors from the army, from the police, as well as uh, from uh, prisons. The country is suffering its worst economic crisis in a decade. President Emerson Manangagwa says bringing the economy back from the dead needs patience. But those words will be difficult to accept for frustrated doctors and those who need medical care. Fuel prices go up every week. That means everything else drastically increases. For the poor, living in Zimbabwe is becoming increasingly challenging. Harumutasa, Al Jazeera, Harare. Here's the three-day weather forecast. for this edition of Channel 2 Headline News Update. Tune in on Thursday at 7 p.m. for another episode. Be sure to like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube or you can visit our website at headlinenewsguyana.com for more.